we actually had a camera crew at the conference, as you know, and we shot some video there, and we're going to show some of that video. I interviewed a few of the uh, attendees and panelists at the conference. So let's go ahead and roll that tape, and then we'll come back and talk some more. Okay. The conference took place in the Paul Berg Hall of the Lee Ka Shing Center at Stanford University. The conference included a mixture of lectures, panel discussions, and games, all designed to foster collaboration between industry, government, and academia. Henry Etzkowitz is the president of the Triple Helix Association. He co-organized the conference, and he's the author of a book called The Triple Helix. I asked him about the objectives of the Triple Helix Association. The objective is to uh, further the, uh, the analysis and use of the concept of the Triple Helix, which stands for University Industry Government Interactions. Yeah. Is it easy to get this kind of, kind of cooperation? I would imagine that university, business and government might have different interests, different agendas. Do they have to submerge their own interests to join together? Well. They might have to, but usually these collaborations are called together in a time of crisis. And so everyone has an incentive to come together to figure a solution to the crisis. And that was the situation even before the 30s depression, New England was already in a depression. So what's the biggest crisis you're focusing on right now? Right now I think we're in another economic crisis. Uh, and that again calls for a coming together and invention of new ideas. And the new idea that they came with, up with then in the 30s was to move the economic development of the region to knowledge-based economic development. Research projects from the universities that had commercial and economic potential to translate that into firms. And there were examples of that going on in New England from the late 19th to the early 20th century in scientific instruments from Harvard. Uh, in the radio industry at MIT. Martha Russell is Associate Director of Media X, a research organization at Stanford. I asked her about the relationship between Media X and the Triple Helix Conference. The Triple Helix uh, looks at the intersection of business, industry, and university. And Media X is Stanford's catalyst, business facing catalyst for into problems that uh, focus on people and advanced communication technology. We interact with the business community, identifying the edge questions that are three to five years out, and bring those questions into Stanford University researchers and labs with a challenge question. Can you give an example of one of those edge I can, questions? Yes, we are working on some very interesting problems now that are looking for the questions of the future on the fusion of virtual and real environments and on how to measure and improve the productivity of people who work with knowledge. One of the beneficiaries of the collaboration fostered by the conference is the medical field. Ahmed Calvo is a medical officer in the Health Resources and Services Administration, or HRSA, an agency of the federal government. Now I understand that you're trying to develop new models of delivering health care. What are some of the new concepts in your model of health care? Okay. Um, well, probably the most basic new um, real concept is um, the notion of an expanded care team. Uh, the notion that somehow you have a, a single um, doctor as maybe on average 15 minutes visits for four visits for a Medicare patient. Um, really making a difference to their health outcomes um, is uh, hard to believe um, because in, in, in practice most people spend their day living by themselves or with friends or with family. So we're interested in an expanded care team in a much, much more broader sense. Does this have to do with social networking? For example, all of the players on this team could be on Facebook or something similar and they yes. can all communicate instantaneously right. together. Exactly. So there, there, are, there are possibilities of combining um, people's interests and choices of, of communication, i.e. things like Facebook, um, with, with trust. To, to be able to really make a difference in a person's life and their decisions, that person needs to have real trust that they're part of your team and they're not actually trying to hurt you. Um, the flip side of this is people don't always know all the individuals that might be of real help to them. And so 
social networking and use of telecommunications and such to help that um, might, might allow you to meet other people that truly would make a difference to you. Another presenter at the conference was Slavica Singer, a UNESCO professor of entrepreneurship at the University of Croatia. I asked her about the importance of collaboration. But I think uh, that in next uh, uh, decades, uh, probably the most important thing will be collaboration. Because uh, none, uh, any country in the world, does not have enough resources, enough uh, commitments, enough knowledge to uh, solve uh, crucial problems in the world. So, especially for small country like Croatia is, we have to collaborate between the university, government and business sector, and of course civil society, to uh, find a way how to uh, solve uh, high unemployment and uh, the situation where people actually do not have expected quality of life. Does this assume international cooperation? It's also it's co uh, cooperation on all levels, on a, a local level, mm -hmm. on national level and international level. But mm -hmm. for this, uh, the most important thing is to develop trust. If we do not trust each other, we cannot collaborate. So that was some of our video from the Triple Helix Conference. Keith, that last speaker said something about the need to trust each other. And if we can't trust each other, we can't really collaborate. And she's talking about internationally between different countries. The question is, can we really trust each other? <laughs> well, of course, in a sense, we always have. That is what makes human beings unique, is everything we do depends on collaboration, and collaboration builds on trust. The interesting thing that's happening now is the scale. Trust used to be in the village, in a small thing, and we had constant contact. We had regular eye contact, regular interactions, body language. So trust was easy to develop and easy to maintain and sustain. Now we're collaborating and interacting on a global scale, sometimes through video conferences, sometimes through our computers, sometimes through our phones, sometimes through email. And all of these technologies have put themselves in this human network. And we are now, as a, as a, as a race, as a species, learning how to extend that trust that evolved in a small context and apply it in a big context. And it's very, very challenging. I mean, this is actually what the H-Star Institute, it's, the, the, the institute that's, that was the host for the Triple Helix con Conference. Well, tell me a little bit about HSTAR, because you're the founder yep. of that, and you're the executive director of it. What is the purpose of it? What does that stand for, first of all? It's HSTAR. human sciences and, <coughs> excuse me, it's human sciences and technologies, advanced research. Human sciences deliberately comes first, because although a lot of what we do focuses around technology, both how we design technology and how we use it, the really important questions are about how people respond to technology and how technology needs to be built to respond to, the, to the, the, the needs and the predilections of people. So we really have to understand people much better than we do in order to build better technologies and to make better use of them. And, and when, they're, when they're interjected with human societies, it becomes a crucial issue, that, that point of trust that was just raised. Well, well how do we one. understand people? Do we spend as much time and money trying to understand people as we do trying to understand electrons, for example? Uh, depends where you live. Here in the United States, particularly on the West Coast, we focus on the technology, often at the expense of the people. And yet, look what's happened. We've built these technologies which are incredibly about social interaction. You know, we've got Twitter, we've got Facebook, we've got Google, we've got Yahoo, we've got all these companies within 10 miles of where we're sitting now. Yes, they are technology companies at once level. But when you really look at them, they're not technology companies at all. They are social companies. They're all about mediating human interactions. Well, when, we, when we talk about collaboration, uh, don't different people often have conflicting interests? Even if they're willing to collaborate as a matter of principle, they have different goals. So industry might have very different goals than government, and government might have different goals than academia. Do you have to reconcile the goals to have a true collaboration. Yeah, and it's even more complex because it's not just the, the, the different types of people, but we have different races, we have different nationalities, different cultures, and all of these different groups can communicate on a multiple scale instantly. We are, it's as if billions of people were suddenly crushed together in a small room. We don't know how to cope with that. We're having to understand how to cope with that. And we have to put mechanisms in place based on learning and understanding to figure out how to make this really work. Well, is the idea that 
like all of humanity, has to come together as one? Or do we simply accept the fact that mankind has always been divided into competing factions and that will probably continue to be the case and we'll, we'll live with that and we'll collaborate within our group and not so much... Well, the simple answer is we don't really know what's going to happen because <laughs> the naive picture is you take people and you put technology in and technology sort of makes some sort of a difference between them. But actually, the moment you put the technology in, the people behave differently as well. You, you, you introduce technology to solve what you think is one problem, but the moment you introduce it, the game has changed. And you, you're then into a completely new world. Well, we're talking about using technology to solve problems, but some people might say that technology is the cause of many problems. For example, we're trying to use technology uh, to prevent adverse climate change, and you might say that it's technology that is the cause of climate change. Is the solution to the problems caused by technology more technology? Well, more technology is going to happen whether it's a solution or not. And what, will almost, what always happens is the technology solves some problems and raises other problems. It's like throwing pebbles into a pond. You create a lot of ripples, and the ripples at first look very chaotic, but after a few minutes, it begins to settle down and it becomes rather elegant. That's what's going to keep happening over and over again every time we introduce new technologies. Every time there's a new whiz thing comes out <coughs> of Silicon Valley, society will ripple. In the process, governments can be toppled, as we've just seen recently. Mm. 